gear does not matter. Okay, fine, it kind of does, and there is a place for great gear, but if you have a great story, it doesn't really matter. You can find tons of amazing stories online using outdated gear and outdated, you know, camera equipment. One prime example is Panina Bautista. She has grown her following to hundreds of thousands of followers, and I met her like last Feb, and then I met her again, I think in June or something like that, and she told me the story of how she does all of her daily vlogging on her iPhone. Not only records on her phone, but edits on her phone too. Six hours a day of editing. And now here's a video about my little pocket camera. Um, sure, he's you know a little on the above average price side, and I'm super thankful for that, but he's outdated. He cannot record in 4K. His fastest full HD frame rate is like 50 FPS. He cannot record in S-Log, and the autofocus takes like two whole weeks. Here, let me show you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yo. There you go. But that's the thing. You know, even if you have outdated equipment, even if your camera isn't that good, just keep hustling hard and you're gonna get somewhere. You can get tens of thousands of subscribers in less than a year, or maybe even hundreds of thousands in Banina's case, and I'm sure many other people's cases. Heck, even if you don't know what S-Log or frame rates or an EVF is, that's totally fine. As Casey Neistat said, all you need is a phone, an internet connection, and a good idea. I'm blessed to have started with an above average camera, but you don't need an amazing camera to start. Just start, hustle hard, and you are going to get somewhere. Gear matters like this much in comparison to the skill level of the actual vlogger and storyteller, which matters like this much. It doesn't even fit in the frame, like, bro. See, like, like this much. And for sure, you're gonna improve along the way. Compare my first vlog to my latest vlogs, there has to be at least some improvement, right? Anyway, here's what I think of my Sony RX100 Mark III for vlogging in 2017. I'm sweating. All right, we'll cover these four categories. Let's start with category number one. When it comes to portability, I'm giving this guy a five out of five. It's a no-brainer. He fits in my pocket, his lens is retractable, his flash and his EVF are also tucked away, although I can't show you guys how my EVF works because it doesn't even want to pop up. It's very light and it's not fragile at all. I usually just slip it in my bag and it bounces around when I move around and I get it back out. And <laughs> Well, by now it's a little beat up, but I mean, that took years. For functionality, I am giving this guy a B. Um, for its size, it has amazing functionality. If I were to list down the essentials of a vlogging camera for you, it would be full HD, a flip up screen, stabilization, and good autofocus. The Mark III has full HD recording up to 50 frames per second uh, in like XAVCS format and AVC HD. Those things don't really matter in the vlogging world. Maybe in the film world they matter a little more, but then I mean, basically it means it's okay. The screen flips up and down also. You know, you have full manual controls, you have optical zoom, low light is really good, stabilization is also pretty good. White balance and exposure work fine, picture profiles make coloring easier, and basically, you know, it's got all the normal settings of what you might want in a good vlogging camera. I mean, I don't really worry much about settings. It does fall short though in three things. Optical zoom is quite slow, check this out. There is no mic input, so I mean, let's say I open the windows right now, give me one second. So the windows open, the electric fan down here is on. Um, you can judge for yourself what the audio quality is like. It might be better, you know, if I had a mic, but this mic actually does pretty fine. I'm pretty sure you can hear what I am saying pretty clearly anyway. And the last thing that I'm kind of frustrated with is that the autofocus takes like three months. I mean, there are times like I, I point it somewhere else and then I want you to look there and then look back at me and it takes a while to focus. Whoa, hey, it's not that bad this time. But what I do sometimes is I get this button and when I press it, I can manually adjust the focus and that helps me a lot so that I can focus on what I wanna focus on faster. In terms of ease of use, this guy gets an 88%. Uh, it's got an auto mode, you can 
up the screen as it record and like boom you just flop. It turns on fast enough and you don't have to worry about a mic to see if you know it's turned on or it has enough battery. You can charge it via micro USB on the go. You can use the picture profiles and that means you don't need to really color your footage. And you can send footage to your smartphone. Advanced controls are here too for you guys who are very nitpicky about your settings. So yeah, this is a like a professional point and shoot camera or something like that, you know. So it, it does cater to the people who want their settings also pretty manually done. So again, my beef when it comes to ease of use is the autofocus because sometimes I really just have to manually focus it myself. It doesn't make it very easy to use. For video quality, I am giving this camera a you can't record in 4K, you can only record in full HD 1080p, but then in such a slow internet country like the Philippines, why are you going to watch a video in 4K anyway, right? You can record in MP4, in AVC HD, in XAVCS, I have no idea what those things mean, but somehow that should help you get greater dynamic range out of your video footage or something like that. And see, I'm not too picky about the quality of video footage you get out of a camera as long as it's watchable, it's full HD. This is what it looks like straight out of the Sony and this is what it looks like out of the iPhone. I, I, I think, you know, I don't really mind. Last thing I want to take you through is a low light experience of this camera. So you can see how it works in low light. Let's take it somewhere. So this is like, okay, this is Ryan's room. Uh, here's a room tour of Ryan's room. This is like sort of dark. Let's close these blinds. This is like very little light coming out. Um, and this is what you can see. So low light is actually pretty good. I'm just taking a while to focus though. Oh wow, it's showing up. It's hard to explain, but it's showing up on the screen brighter than it shows up in my eyes. There you go, that's the Sony RX100 Mark III in 2017. I think it's still a great camera if you have some moolah to shell out on a brand new Sony RX100 Mark III, then go do it. Of course, you have other options like the Canon counterpart, the G7X. You can also get something like the cheaper Sony a5100 or even the a5000 those are good cameras the footage of this rx100 mark III that i am recording on i recorded on the canon m10 right here so um, this is also a pretty good vlogging camera bottom line there are lots of great vlogging cameras out there and you don't need the perfect one to start i love this camera even though it's outdated and if you know it had all this the features the same just you know a super quick autofocus like that would be my dream camera so that's it you can see it in my face i'm getting a little masungit because it's so hot and because like i i want to keep the audio crisp so i can't turn on the fan oh that feels so good yeah I want to make a quick shout out to Spectrum Fair Manila. I will be singing there, performing there, a few of my songs. So I, I know you guys have been wanting me to post a cover on my channel for a long time. Maybe I will soon, but before that, I will be performing at Spectrum. Details down below. Um, let's seize the carpe diem together.